In this video tutorial I will take you step by step through creating an Amazon EC2 instance. I will then show you two different ways of connecting to it, the first from my Windows PC, but the second works from whatever operating system you are using, be it Mac OS, Linux, or Windows. So after this short introduction I will get right to it. To create a new AWS instance, I first log on. I firstly change my location to the London region from the Paris one, otherwise any new instances I create will automatically be in this French region. I then select the EC2 service, and it shows me the London region dashboard. Now this will at some point catch you out, as it did me while making this video. I open the EC2 global view, which on a new browser tab, connects to all AWS regions to show you a summary of what you have in each region. And although it only shows a limited set of resources, it is enough for me to see I have accidentally left some instances running in the North Virginia region, where I was practicing the steps I was using in this video. I return to the London Dashboard Browser tab and select Instances. From there, I select the Launch Instance button. It takes me to the new AWS web page to create a new instance. I give the instance a name. When it comes to selecting an operating system, the predefined Amazon verified images are shown in groups. If I am looking for more I would select this option, which has any machine images I have built, the marketplace images which may come with packages like WordPress, web servers, security software etc pre-installed, but you may be charged an hourly fee for some of them. And finally there are some community provided images, which personally I stay away from, just in case a user has installed some problematic software before publishing the image. I select Ubuntu 22.04, as it's indicated as one of the Amazon's free tier eligible operating systems. I leave the architecture unchanged. Amazon have a wide range of instances that are grouped into families like standard, high compute, high storage etc. For more details press the compare instance types link. I will also leave a shortcut to the AWS webpage that details the different instance types and families Amazon offer in the YouTube description. Now only, one or two of these instances are free tier eligible, and being on the free tier, which I showed you how to join in my previous video, so I am going to select one of those for this video, as they come at no cost. So I select the T2 micro instance. To access the instance, Amazon always recommends an SSH key pair over a password, as it's far more secure. As I don't have one yet, I ask Amazon for a new key pair. I give the key pair a name, and then select the PPK file format as I will be using it with Windows Putty later, and save the resultant file. Although the default network settings are fine as they are, 
I edit them just to show you how you can select a particular availability zone. You can think of availability zones as separate data centers that are spread wide enough in the selected region, so as to not be impacted by the same disaster should it strike like fire, flood, riot, etc. I select the EU West 2A zone. For Security Group, which is Amazon's name for a firewall, I give it a name and description. I leave the default one firewall rule in place, but just show you the source type which defaults to allowing access from anywhere but if you can guarantee your client PC is coming from a fixed IP address, for added security you could select that option. I can't, so leave the default in place. I will show you how to add a new security group rule in a subsequent video, which I will link to on the end screen and in the YouTube description, but for now as I am just showing you how to create a basic instance, I leave everything at their default values. For storage, Amazon provides 30 GB of disk space in their free tier, which I am using to make this video, as such the default of 8 GB is fine, so I leave it in place. I do not need to change any advanced details, so I leave that section untouched. It shows a summary of all the major options I have selected for this instance. I am happy with it, so I just press the orange launch instance button. After the instance has been created I view all instances. I am returned to the main instance list screen, where the instance can be seen. I have speeded up this bit about 8 times, first you need to wait until the instance state shows is running, and then until it shows that it passed 2 out of 2 status checks. You may need to refresh the web page to see these changes, like I had to. Now that the instance has fully booted up, by selecting it, it shows details about it on the bottom half of the screen once selected. The most common tab that you will find yourself using is this details one, where you will for example find the instance's public IP address, the instance type it was based off etc. The second most used tab, in my opinion is the security tab, where you will find the firewall security group which controls which traffic ports are allowed to reach the instance, and will need to be amended if for example a web server is installed and you want to let web-based traffic now reach the instance. Although not at all required, I like to get an instance screenshot, just to confirm it is at the logon screen and there are no warning messages shown, so fully ready to receive connections. There are three common ways that you could use to connect to this instance from Windows 10, and I am going to show you two of them. You can connect from a PowerShell command line using the SSH command. I am not going to show you that way, as being command line based it can be more challenging to learn all the options. Instead, the first way I am going to show you is by using the Windows PuTTY GUI based program. So, first I go to the official PuTTY website and download the 64-bit version, which Windows 10 needs. After downloading it, I install it, using all the defaults, and then start it. Copy the instance's IP address from the website. And before I forget, name and save the connection details so far. And try to connect using the root user. Fill in the SSH key by referring to the file I downloaded earlier. Please note, the location of this SSH private key box has changed from earlier versions of PuTTY. Save all changes and open the connection. As it's the first time I have connected to the instance using PuTTY, it just asks for confirmation. Because I tried to connect with the root user it refused, and instead asks me to connect with the Ubuntu user. So I restart PuTTY, change the connection details as asked. 
save all changes, then open the connection again. This time it connects, and to prove it I simply ask what disk space is free on the instance by using the Linux DF command. The second, and easiest way of connecting, and because this is web browser based should work on Windows, Mac OS, Chrome OS, Linux and even tablets and phones, is to ensure the instance you want to connect to is ticked, and then select the connect button. The first tab of the resultant window will have the IP address filled in automatically and the default username for this Linux operating system. I press connect. And it's that easy. However, because I have logged on with the user Ubuntu which is the more secure and recommended approach, I will need to remember to prefix some commands with sudo. But just in case you ever need to log in as root I try that, to demonstrate. And it works. What this web-based connection method implies though, is all instances are only as secure as your logon user ID and password, because if an attacker were ever to get these, they could connect to your Linux-based instances, and not even need the SSH key, as this web-based approach does not need you to supply it. It is therefore more important than ever your password is long, ideally 12 characters or more, complex, not found in a dictionary, and definitely not something like a pet's or your child's name, that can be found for example, on your Facebook page. This video, although standalone, is part one of a short three-part video course, which is intended just to take you through the basic features available in Amazon's EC2 service. It is not intended to be complex enough for any AWS exam, and will not cover advanced EC2 features like load balancing or auto-scaling but is intended to provide a good grounding covering the main uses users often face when first starting to use their EC2 service in anger. I will have links to all three episodes in the YouTube description. The course uses where possible, free tier resources, so can be completed at almost no cost. I have also made a video showing how to sign up for these free tier resources, and I will also leave a link to that video, in the YouTube description. On screen you can see the next installment of the short three-part AWS course I have produced, taking you through the main features of Amazon EC2 that most users will come across, as they start using it in anger. And if you want to see more instructional videos, like this one in the future, click on the Cloud Tech logo. Thanks for watching.